The United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. And I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before, and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. We might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. Welcome back to the show. It is Friday, Thursday, August 8th, 2024, 12.02 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the Red Voice Media News Network. Glad this. My name is Wayne Dupree. Let me introduce the team, uh, Godfather Conservative Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, Wayne and uh, Jason and everybody out there uh, ready to get into this one more time this week. <laughs> and then we have the Imam of Minnesota, Mr. Jason Robinson. Hey, 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 happy Thursday, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Tim Walls. Y'all get to experience it. I wonder who's going to run for president as a Democrat. Because <laughs> I'm just, uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't see how they can do this. I do. And they're going to do it. I don't think so. Yeah, I know. A lot but, of I mean, know. Who, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. It, it'll it'll be an interesting convention, nonetheless. Oh yeah, just as soon, like like we were saying yesterday. Well, like I was saying yesterday, just as soon as um, oh man, they don't have a lot of people. Um, probably gonna have Michelle on Tuesday. Oh man, wait. No, probably have Michelle on Monday. Shapira on Tuesday. Obama on Wednesday. And maybe Biden, blah, 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 on Wednesday. Oh, that'd be a great question. Do they let Joe Biden talk? They got me. You know they're going to. You think they have to, but. I mean. he did the interview last night. I've right. heard insiders. I've heard insiders say he might try to snag the convention. I don't know about that, but yeah, I they're, they're in they're in up they're in up, upheaval here, man. They they know this guy that this this Tim Waltz guy. I mean, I don't know if you know any Wayne, but I was in the reserves for a long time, and I know people like Tim Waltz, and I hate him. Most of us do. Hutch, we've seen him. We've seen him on. Uh, well, I don't know about. And they're like him too. They're people in high in high positions. Yeah, when I mean, you take him off the table at a at a uh, deployment, a command sergeant major at a small unit like a battalion. I mean, that's four or five companies or batteries and artillery. But I mean, he's the man. He is the man. He's the only guy that can close the door and tell the battalion commander stop doing dumb shit. Right. But for, I mean, um, it's like there's one in Congress that's that's still in there, though. A Democrat that's still in there. Senator. Blumenthal. Democrat. Blumenthal. He's still in there. I know. I mean, it's like, and and 
and the and the reason why I was the reason why I made this about the media, well, and it wasn't really about the media, but it's really about all this stuff, seriously. Because yesterday, I um yesterday right after the show, after I and I did edit it, Jay. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> I did the beginning break. was a little rough. Yeah, re- yeah, it was crazy at the beginning, and then Hutch, you know how you get those interview people that you really don't have to ask a question. I do. My favorites. Yesterday. <laughs> he had good information, but a lot of information. his delivery needs some polishing. <laughs> we couldn't get it. I don't did we get a question then? The whole time? I don't know. We might have got one or two, but it yeah, was yeah. it was tough. Might have got I mean, this stuff looks like a cool product. Yeah, he's a serious product. Yeah. And Wade and I talked after the show. It's like, all you got to do is say, folks, it's a sweetener that gives you a vitamin that you don't get because we no longer eat bones. And it stops inflammation. Right. That's it. Just that's great it. product. Um, <laughs> I, but uh, no, he, he, he's cool old dude. It's it, and you know, and as you said, he has a terrific product. Um, what are you talking about? We were talking about. Oh, I had to, man, I had to, I had to cut. Up. I started watching TV like early in the afternoon yesterday. I did. I was like, oh, here we go. I mean, this is, I know, I did say this is campaign season. This is what usually happens. And it's August. Maybe, and and it's August, and there's no Congress in session, so they have to make stories. We we told well, it's not that they have to make stories; they linguish on stories to make them Hollywood production type of deals and stuff to make it like. And it's only August eighth. Oh Jesus, <laughs> ninety some days. <laughs> it's only August eighth. Um, yeah, no, I I cut I cut that yesterday. I was like, because. It seemed like every account or every yeah every account was posting the same thing, the same thing over and over again. I was like, I can see how somebody could get indoctrinated and brainwashed on it. And even if somebody came and explained the truth about uh, and uh, well, I mean, I I didn't see a whole lot of the left, but I do see the left. Even if somebody explained the truth about JD Vance. You ain't getting the truth in on social media. You're not doing it. You're not. You're not getting the truth in. It's whatever the narrative is, and everybody catches on to it, and boom, 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 boom. That's what's shared. That's it. Um, you know, that's that's just how it is. But with uh, with Waltz, Jason already said. The guy has a long laundry long laundry list of stuff. The only problem is, is that the right is sharing it to the right. The left isn't reading the right's post. The right is reading the right's post. What are you supposed to do? Write a letter to the editor of the New York Times? Why not? Because they won't publish it. Well, then, right. fine, fine. You know what? Somebody used to buy billboards. <laughs> Somebody used to buy. You got to get. Uh, uh, I agree with you. I'm just saying. Initiative. We're in, or, in between a rock and a hard place here. When the whole yeah, it's going to be yeah. interesting to see how the media handles walls. Because in the Minnesota media, they just cover everything up. And like the stolen valor stuff. I mean, 24 years as an Army reservist. Yep. Attained a high level. Yep. He went, it, they they frame his active military service. He was in Italy when there was a war in Afghanistan providing support. Now, I don't know. To me, that doesn't count as like warfare service. You guys are veterans, so you can tell me. But as a, as a normal, somebody who didn't serve, uh, like that doesn't feel like military service when he says, oh, I had weapons in military. And then for his retirement, they notified Minnesota National reserves that he had declared he was going to run for Congress. They had notified him. We're going to start sending people to Afghanistan in March. In May, he announced his retirement. He changed his mind. Yeah. Yeah. And he demoted 
And after he retired, he still claimed his old title uh, or his own rank. And then the, his his battalion was notified like a month or two after he they officially got word. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, it depends on how you choose to interpret it. I look at serving in Italy as not serving in an armed conflict. I could be wrong. Um, and, and the fact that they notify you that they're going to deploy people from Italy. Minnesota. You don't know it's you specifically. <laughs> he served in Italy. Right, that's yeah, like, yeah, he served that's in Italy. Like, that's like me serving in, La serving in Las Vegas, I guess. I mean, I, I mean, unless unless there was a war happening at the time, he, you might it have was been It was the stationed. war in Afghanistan. You might have been stationed in Italy, but, I mean, I don't know of any wars over the last 40, 50 years that was in Italy, I, you know. Personally, I don't hold it against him that he got sent to Italy. You go where you're, where you're sent. Yep. Uh, but just a little background on it. What he did, he lied in a couple areas, and they're really important areas because he was still calling himself a command sergeant major a week ago. And he's not. You know, until this came out. What he did, he got selected for the sergeant major's academy, and he wasn't in the Army Reserve. He's in the Minnesota National Guard. Oh, right. Sorry. And – he, he got selected for the for the Sergeant Majors Academy, which is a tough school. And he started it, and he dropped out of it. And when he dropped out of it, he was given a conditional promotion. In other words, you're the command sergeant major of this artillery battalion, uh, but you must get this, you, got, you must pass this school by this time. And he retired before he went back to that school. So he was never a bona fide command sergeant major he was a master sergeant an e8 and he's lying every time he says he's a sergeant major um as far as the deployment um there's nobody lower than that nobody this guy was the top nco of a battalion of five batteries and that's a lot of people and they all looked up to him especially the younger guys they look at the sergeant major when and wayne can tell you this when they, when the guy comes in the room you get scared yeah, Chief Master Sergeant. Yeah, you know, ours is Chief Master Sergeant, and uh, we had one. Uh, he he had his own little office, but every time you walked in there, it's almost like you're walking into talking. It's almost like you were walking in to talk to a a, ma a, a major or a, or a lieutenant general, or you know, he was sitting back with his pipe. You ain't supposed to be smoking in the building, but he's he's. Chief Master Sergeant, he got like 11 stripes and stuff. Yeah. He's sitting back with his feet up on the table. Here I am with two stripes. He got like, I mean, and he been in, con he, at that time, he been in combat a long time ago. It's like, oh, this is, this dude is like, dude. <laughs> like, he, he lied, he lied after he got out. He panicked and got out of the unit, and then he said that he did it so he could run for Congress. And I would say, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, call your office. You know, she stayed in the whole time. You can get permission to run for office in the reserves. Right. And when I say reserves, I mean reserve component. That's the yeah. reserves of the National Guard. Yeah. When 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 I hear about the National Guard type of stuff, and and and, and you know, I I mean, they, they are part of the military. You no. Know? Yeah. Yes, they are. Okay. To me, and I hope people don't really take this wrong or whatnot. Um, I see them as as an Air Force guy. I just see the National Guard as a B team, um, where you, you know you got your Army, your Air Force, your Navy, and your Marines. And each one of those services has a has a reserve component. Right. When you get out, right. It's uh, as a matter of fact, join it. you can join it right away these days. Because I remember when I was getting out, <laughs> I I had done eight years. I, I did eight, but I'm walking by people who seemed like they were getting out a little bit early, but the remaining time they doubled that for the reserves. You they they scared me into joining. Did they really? Yeah, I was at my I was processing out in California after I got back from Korea, and they said if you don't join the reserves, your records could be lost. 
and I was everybody in the room signed up. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. Yeah, they kept. When you get out of the army, that's all you got. Your records. Yeah, that is well, true. And I got to say, you guys are the veterans. So you know this better. But like I say, as an outsider, I look at this and this is shady as hell because you got this guy going out making it sound like he was serving on the front lines of Afghanistan and and he got a heads up they were going to get deployed and so then he doesn't complete his classes and reach I mean the whole thing is just sketchy and and to campaign that he, on his military rank he never really earned and act like he was on a front line like to me that's the stolen valor part it is you know if if he just said hey I had 24 years in the reserves had a couple of deployments. It was great. Okay, fine. But when, you know, he makes it sound like he's Sylvester Sloan on the front lines, you know, <laughs> shooting at the shooting at the Afghans, it's like, come on. And his unit got a warning order for Iraq, not even Afghanistan. Right. And during Afghanistan, that's when he was with the 503rd uh, parachute do down in Italy. You now, know, you did say that um, some people were, I that Minnesota kind of looked over it. Right. Oh, it's going to happen with the nationwide media. They well, with the nationwide media, what they're doing is trying to help the Harris and uh, Walt's campaign by bringing right. up Donald's, Donald Trump Spurs thing and how he got out of the service and that the doctor said that he wrote it up. That's how they they're trying to help. Them sure. by adding that into well, that's what happened in response. Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, like you see the tampon Tim thing going around. I mean, and the whole point was Tim Walsh was so ingrained in the LGBTQIA uh movement that he got tampon dispensers put in men's and boys' bathrooms. Me, I don't understand how you do that. I know it's ridiculous. He did it. But if you look at the you never media, have to refill them, you know, until they until they figure out they can light them on fire. Right. You know? But but I mean, the media is making it sound like the people of Minnesota were opposed to giving people tampons. No, you're just I mean, indoctrinating I mean, yeah, 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 kids I mean. to this LGBTQ lifestyle that shouldn't be. Now, at first, when I heard the story, because, you know, it kind of. I knew a young lady that went to school and had a little accident. Okay. Early in their life, yeah. had a little accident. And I was like, Oh, he, he did that for, see, I didn't think of, I didn't hear the girl. I, and I hear the boys part. That's the whole point. I the was like, right, exactly. Right. Right. So I'm like, man, people are getting mad because he put the temper. And, and, and then when I saw the thing, I was like, that don't make sense for them to put in the boys unless girls are going into the boys. Um, no, it's, it's it's all to make boys okay with thinking they're little girls. If you notice this whole movement, you never hear anybody at all ever trying to groom a girl to be a man. Right. All you hear about is them trying to feminize our masculine part of our civilization. Yep. It's a destructive thing for the whole civilization. It's not. This is this is so evil. It's satanic, man. I mean, it, it's literally, and then you take the COVID um, side effects. The 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 fertility rate is going down. Yep, among American yeah. men, man. I mean, it's uh, among Western men. Well, and that also happens with the food too, with all the sure. soy, the soy stuff that they're putting in to what's called. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now. Um, you have kids, Jason has kids. I was late. I was late on having. I, as a matter of fact, I didn't even think I was gonna have any. Uh, I was eating a whole lot of stuff back then. I was drinking do, uh, uh, Mountain Dew, and <laughs> that's the worst you could drink. I did not oh, know. Yeah. That. I, I look. I mean, I was drinking it like so like good. I was popping pills, man. I was. I mean, I was getting six packs, twelve packs, uh, two liters, three liters. You know, I'm. You ever hear people joke about West Virginia people's teeth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the favorite drink. The, as a matter of fact, Mountain Dew is named after West Virginia. It's the wow. Mountain State. Wow. Yep. But, they and, give it that. They put it in little babies' bottles. Well, I tell you this: 
Just as soon as I stopped drinking it, I had twins. So, I mean, <laughs> I haven't had it since. For, I haven't had it for over 20 years. But, yeah, I, I mean, uh, Mark. Well, here's what's going to be fascinating with this Tim Wall stuff is the media covers it up and tries to spin it the best way they can. And now to watch the national media try, I mean, because Walls, if we would have had honest media reporting, he would have never been elected in Minnesota. You know, he'll even say he's a head coach. He was an assistant coach. I, I mean, the guy's just. He's got a problem, man. He's got a problem. He's got Iraq yeah. war veterans. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because we all know, we all know people that did what he did. Yeah. Right. I know lieutenant colonels that did it. I know sergeant majors that did it. And I hate every one of them because we needed them. But you know what? They, and, but you know what they're going to do because um, I'm hearing that. They got military people that are coming out signing a letter um, against them. They're going to find 20 or 30 to sign a letter for him. I mean, he ought to be in jail for stolen valor. It's a year. I know. He's been signing the stolen valor bill. <laughs> yeah, but how often? How often oh, I know it's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, now we have <laughs> seen some younger men walking on the street with military uniforms and their medals and stuff. They don't get arrested, but they do get beat up, though. I mean, or, you know, they get ran back to wherever they came from, you know. I and here's what I love, words. too, just to give a shout out to Carl in the Rumble chat. You're going to do it anyway. I mean, Carl. he's getting destroyed it, uh, right now. From what yeah. I'm but here's what's funny. I've lived in Minnesota for 45 of my 50 years of life. I followed Walls' ascent to his public office. I, you know, I'm ingrained in, in Minnesota politics and somehow this retard from Canada thinks he knows more than I do about it. Carl, the guy's a, the guy's a sham. He's a communist. He's awful. And, uh, but there's billions, there's millions of Carl's out there that are like, Oh, well, technically you see he, uh, and you guys are in the military. Technically he retired before they issued the orders when they come out and say they're That's sending not. people you know if you're in the military, like that's what you signed up for, right? And to to get out after the announcement that they're going to start sending people, that's just horrible, in my opinion. I mean, we would get a um, we would get a dishonorable discharge if we did something like that. I mean, well, we I don't think it. they were doing it. He did we his twenty years. He did his twenty years. They couldn't make him stay in. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying from a if you sign up to do military service, my dad was a Marine and all of a sudden the time and you're in the reserves and the time's coming where you're going to get deployed to retire right before that. And you know, when you do that, they had to pull a Sergeant major from Southern, some other unit right, to come take his place. A guy that's never been in the unit. Mm -hmm. They had to bring right. over there, you know, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's horrible. What he did. You know, and in the military, like you've got to have the back of your brothers and, I mean, all that camaraderie stuff, like, that's what yeah. makes the military great. Yeah. And then just, uh, oh, hey, it looks like we might be sending out. Well, I'm out of here, guys. Good luck. I'll tell you what. I, I'll just give you my quick personal story. Um, I I got deployed. What Iraq started in Iraq and Afghanistan started in 2003, right? I'm working full time for the Army, for the Army Reserve. I'm deploying units, equipment overseas. That's what I do for my living. I'd make sure the equipment squared away. Well, right around 2005, my buddy and I, an E8, just like Waltz, uh, decided we're going to unit. We're in a high position of authority, and we're going to units, and everybody that we're trying to tell what to do has a combat patch on, but we don't. Now, my buddy was a Vietnam vet, but I wasn't a combat vet. And I, so we actually both decided uh, we got we to gotta volunteer for this deployment. When we found out that a, a unit was coming into our building, brand new unit, taking over and, and deploying, we both had to volunteer because it's like, how can you go? And I didn't want to go, believe me, but how can you go to a subordinate unit and tell people how to do their job when you haven't been in the game? You know, I'm looking at these people going, I owe it to them. I got to go. And I mean, it's my turn. Well, and I just think about it in the work standpoint. I mean, I, my last 
job in corporate America I had, I, I had worked there for a number of years and I stayed extra time to get stuff done. That was, you know, I didn't give a two weeks notice, which is all I would have had to do. I stayed for three months to get through things. And in the military to dedicate that much time of your life and to receive all the benefits of it. And then right when they need you to bail, that's just bad. Think of him as an enlisted battalion commander. Cause that's what he was. Right. He had more juice than the executive officer. It's insane. Unbelievable. And are we good? Ale is oh, we're all fired up, Wayne. Okay. Yeah. Let me... Well, let's get Ayla on here. Hey. Uh Ayla, are y'all getting this weather too? Well, what a rainy day in New York yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna get worse. Well, I mean, well, I mean, it's yeah, that that um that hurricane, that that um, thing coming up from the south, but man, is y'all usually have um, sunny sunny uh, skies behind you, but man, it's dark, it's dark today. How you doing? Good, good. Thank you for having me today. Well, glad to have you, and uh, get get right to it. Uh, the uh, it seems like uh, there's a lot going on with uh, uh, China. And the Olympics, um, uh, something about doping uh, last week. I think, I think that story came out. But then um, I guess there was somebody, also a woman, that had got arrested for her social media posts regarding the CCP. Yes. So um, last week, the Chinese Communist Party actually announced the arrest of a, you know, of a user, you know, who posted social media posts, uh, and the allegation was that the user um, had, uh, you know, had posted defamation uh, and defaming athletes and groups, and had caused negative impact on Chinese social media networks. Uh, and you know, the CCP police did not mention uh, how long the arrest will be, and did not mention where the arrest will be taking place. Um, however, the, the arrest notice was being announced on social media. It was also, uh, you know, shown to the public that, you know, in, in within 24 hours, uh, Chinese Communist Party are deleting social media posts for over 10,000, for over 12,000. Um, and for each day, hundreds of accounts are being suspended because of, you know, so-called improper comments or improper social media posts um, criticizing authorities uh, of the Chinese Communist Party. Mm. You know, um, about a year ago, one of your colleagues showed us some really devastating footage of some flooding that was happening in China oh, last yeah. year. Yeah, and I mean, it was really brutal. We had we asked him to play it again. It was so bad. I mean, I'm looking at this, and just vehicles are being washed away. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about the Chinese media. They do, they're doing it again. I mean, they came out here, and all these villages are at risk from floods, and now they're destroyed. And the media never reported. What's going on with that? Well, that's absolutely correct. In fact, that these floodings take place every single year in China, uh, just in different areas and different provinces. And this year, the flooding is now taking place in Jilin City, which is the northern part of China, uh, and also Hunan Province, the mid part, uh, you know, of China. The problem here today is that you know the Chinese Communist Party. Um, is good at manipulating what people can see and what people can't, right? And so all of the news and all of the numbers related to the death number uh, and the injury number of the floodings were, are now omit, omitted and eliminated from the Chinese social media posts. So if you log on to one of the largest, you know, CCP social media platforms, all you can saw was, you know, news about celebrities, news about Olympics, uh, and there was never you know, a single news about these floodings and whether the, the numbers that the CCP gave out is accurate is still questionable. Um, and so since the end of July and, uh, you know, beginning from early August, the flooding has actually caused the hundreds of villages to be disappeared within one day. Vehicles have been washing away uh, and uh, there were no, you know, accurate updates on the numbers, whether, you know, how many people were, uh, you know, found dead in these flooding. And in fact that, you know, the flooding still takes place um, because, uh, the, the heavy rings also take take place in China these days. Oh, Ayla, it's just tragic what's happening to the people over there. He, now, we were talking a little bit about Tim Walls, and I know the NFSC probably hasn't. You know, maybe you guys have done some research on it, but he, he was a coach. He got busted for a DUI, 
And then he all of a sudden went and started taking jobs in China. Are you guys working on anything? Or you guys know anything about that? He was very involved over there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've done some homework before I hop on your show, right? Uh, it seems like, uh, you know, Team Watts has been very interested in, in China. Uh, in fact, that, you know, the, uh, the media has said that he had made more than 30 trips to China on, in the past. On, and the first trip that he made was actually in 1989, uh, where Tiananmen Massacre occurred in Beijing. On, however, uh, you know, he did not leave Beijing at that time, I, I, I believe, you know, just from uh, the readings and, and the websites that I read. On, and uh, he made June 4th a romantic uh, Memorial Day in, in his life because five years later, he and his wife got married on June 4th. Um, and then they spent honeymoon in China as well. Uh, later on, Tim Waltz and his wife established a company uh, to coordinate, you know, summer trips uh, to bring American high school students to China. And that happens between uh, from, I would, I would believe, from 1990s to almost early 2000. Um, but the problem here is that I found it very interesting that Team Waltz specifically focuses on human rights issues with China. So in the past, he had, you know, held meetings with Hong Kong student activists. And um, he also had met, uh, you know, Tibet spiritual leader Dalai Lama. Uh, but there weren't, there weren't, you know, much criticism that you can find in these introductions about his relationship with China. And, and in fact, that I found one of the comments that he made it in the 1990s. He said that he he personally believed that if Chinese people had the proper leadership, uh, he believed there are no limits of you know the, the generation. There are low, no limits of this race and, and of what they can do. Uh, I have a, you know a slightly disagreement with that comment because I don't think it's about the proper leadership or the proper leader. I think it's about the proper system. Um, because today, you know, whoever you pick as the next president for the Chinese Communist Party, whether she will, you know, continue to be the empire, uh, emperor for the CCP, or there will be another leader, as long as the system is consisted as, you know, what the CCP is right now, nothing will get changed. The dictator will still become dictators. Uh, the deplorables, the, the, China, the normal Chinese people will still suffer from the high pressure and from, you know, the, the strict policies issued by the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, so I found it very interesting when media introduced, you know, Team Waltz to the public, they often use words like pro-China or anti-China. And in fact, that you know, I, I am more willing to see words like anti-CCP or pro-Chinese Communist Party government. Um, so we can see, well, uh, you, you know, just to make a stance, right, the new federal state of China uh, has no intention to get involved into any United States domestic politics. Right. Uh, but just in terms of, you know, interactions or in terms of uh, relationships with communist China, um, Tim Woods did comment on, you know, he thinks that he does not necessarily view communist China as an adversary. And he does think that, you know, there are there, there should be cooperation with China. I would say that there should be cooperation with Chinese people. There shouldn't be any cooperation with the communist government. So that's, you know, I think that's where we as supporters of the new federal state of China wants to state whoever the candidates are in place right now. The, you know, the big issue is how America will interact or will deal with communist China. It's about the CCP regime. It's not about the Chinese people. You know, um, uh, Jay, you said that he was over there for his wedding or did Ayla said that he was over there for his wedding? Ayla said that. And he got married on the Tiananmen Massacre. That's correct. Anniversary. The anniversary, yeah. See, like, that's just weird. See <clears throat> what what I don't get, and maybe and maybe you can clean this up for me because Bernie Sanders went over there for his wedding or um, Cuba. Too. Cuba. Huh? He went to Cuba. I thought he went to China. No, what's the difference? Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. um, but we've been hearing some of our lawmakers, maybe even before they were lawmakers, but. Um, Separate this for me because China as a country is beautiful. Okay. And a lot of people visit the country uh -huh. because of the history, the beautiful history and whatnot. But how much does, I mean, well, I'm sure that the CCP controls a lot uh, to, to, to um to 
destroy the the people that live there. So how do they treat the visitors that come over there to experience the grand, well, the cover up grand side of China? Because I know that I know that um, NFC NFSC has said that China uh, that the CCP doesn't want people learning about the original or the the great history. Of China, so where where does that start and begin? Because people are still going over there to to see what your beautiful country is all about. Mm -hmm. So the traveling, you know, uh, you know, when foreigners traveling to China, right, everything looked, uh, you know, looked very uh, normal, uh, mm -hmm. or at least on the surface level, they probably wouldn't feel anything. However millions of cameras were installed on each street that you walk right and millions of surveillance devices are being in you know installed in the hotel that you lift so it is really you know easy for the exactly. chinese communist party to record any tapes uh, that exactly. you probably don't want to see and 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 had any you know uh, recordings on the videos of your conversations uh, you know that that could happen in any of the rooms or any of the hotel rooms in china um and so the problem is that on the surface level you might think that the ccp will treat um the visitors uh, you know uh, differently and even you know well than its own citizens however uh, you know the, the the counteract from the chinese communist party is that they can utilize all of these secret recordings um, you know, to use that against you anytime in the future. Okay. And in okay. fact, that if you are, you know, if you are currently live in China, but you're holding, you know, passports of a different countries, if you have posted anything that is against the Chinese Communist Party, or if you have said something or become very outspoken against the communist regime, the CCP could also find you and threaten you over there. Mm. And this had happened, you know, to residents who are now living, you know, living in, in, in big cities or rural areas, uh, but there are, you know, there are also citizens of, of other countries. I'll name you know, one businessman who is a Chinese Canadian, on Xiao Jianhua, he disappeared in 2018 uh, in Hong Kong, simply because that the CCP wants to arrest him and, and to uh, rip off his wealth because he, had, he used to work for the Chinese Communist Party as one of the proxies and agents. Um, and so, even if you're holding, you know, passports from a different country, mm -hmm. uh, we might, you, you know, we, we might have a different skin colors. However, once you step onto the land of the Chinese Communist Party, it is actually up to them of how they want to treat you. So basically, you don't, you can be a visitor over there, but you don't have any rights as a visitor over there? Well, you can conduct your regular visit. Uh, but if they find that, you know, simply saying that, uh, you know, when if you were to visit China, right, um, at the custom, you know, it was very likely that the national police will, you know, stop you over there right. and put you in a dark room, right? Just because, right. you know, we have been very outspoken against the CCP. Um, and that's the same thing with, you know, every single other visitors. If they are not opposing against the Chinese Communist Party, it might be okay. But if they have noticed something and have said something publicly against the CCP, you know, there comes the problem. I guess I can't go. Um. Yeah, we're out. <laughs> Just uh, something that we do that the media doesn't do is correct ourselves. Bernie Sanders had his end of, had his uh, honeymoon in Russia. Russia. Mm -hmm. Russia. Okay. There wow. you go. There you go. Okay. You know, I, I wonder, Ayla, I got one more lingering question. Um, your organization was the first to break to me anyway. Uh, the CCP's involvement in the George Floyd summer of love in the United States, the racial okay. turmoil that we had. And uh, Waltz had a work visa for years in China. He had business dealings there. Uh -huh. And I know if you do that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure that you can't do that without being green lighted by the CCP. You can't just come over to China and start doing what you want to do the way you can here. Um, but do you? Th I, I, I wish you could look into, over the next week or so, any ties between Waltz and the CCP, because he was the governor of the George Floyd riots. Yep. You know, he allowed it. He actively allowed it. Jason knows more about this than I do. Uh, but that, that struck a nerve when I started thinking about that. Mm-hmm. 
Right, right. Well, you, you know, we were we were probably one, the only groups that stayed at the CCP's efforts um, in exaggerating George Floyd's social media influence, you know, in, in the riot. Um, and, and then, you know, if you take a look at one of the indictments that DOJ posted against the CCP's uh, 912 groups, uh, you found that the Chinese Communist Party utilized anonymous social media accounts to exaggerate, uh, you know, content related to George Floyd, and and the purpose was to disturb, you know, the environment, the internet environment in in America, um, and to exaggerate the racial tensions and 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 the racial hatred, uh, you know, attitudes uh, here in the United States. So I won't be, you know, I I won't be surprised that these tactics are still being used by the Chinese communists today. On um, and in terms of, you know, what you know, how she just mentioned about uh, Tim Walz's, um, you know, position over there I, I think I, I actually you know I, I'm more interested in doing more homework o- over that thank you yeah it, it's fascinating you know who knew little old Minnesota is like some of this stuff would be relevant where it where it ties in with the CCP um before before I get you out of here I've got to ask how miles is doing how the team's doing is there any updates on him we, we're praying for him but yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, um, you know, approaching the end of the August, we might be able to hear some updates from his legal defense team. Uh, it has came to my attention that uh, the judge did, um, you know, authorize, uh, I, I, I would say, August 29th and as a deadline for the defense, uh, you know, the, the defense team to file post-trial motions. So we will see from that to see, you know, what directions or what strategies are being applied uh, to Mr. Miles. And, and in the past several weeks, uh, you know, uh, MDC, the Brooklyn MDC, uh, you know, the center that he's now detained uh, has experienced several lockdowns. Uh, the lockdowns has been removed right now. So he was able to communicate with his families. His families were also able to conduct visits uh, to him. So everything as well. We're, we're, you know, we're waiting for the next update from his defense team. Whoa. Well, thank you, Ayla. Thank you for um, joining us. Um, um, another week, and um, I'm I'm sure we're gonna probably have some more questions about this election and some of the stuff that's happening. So, um, whatever whatever we come up with, I'll send it to you on the side. And uh, when y'all come on next week, then you'll let us know and give us an update. But um, yeah, things are things are getting a whole lot more tightly now um so if y'all have any new stuff too you can always break in and let us know uh, absolutely so we can let our audience know okay yeah absolutely awesome all right well thank you so much we'll talk to you we'll talk to you i i think next week okay (laughs) brothers thank you okay i got a question for you do you have any aches and pains chronic inflammation might be the culprit Meet Sweetamine, the natural way to fight inflammation. Sweetamine is packed with the amino acid glycine, the same nutrient found in bone broth that helps regulate inflammation. Many of the diseases we face today are rooted in glycine deficiency. Think about this just for a second. Just one daily serving of Sweetamine provides 8 grams of glycine, enough to stop excess inflammation right where it starts. Most people feel pain reduction after just a few days. Perfect for post-workout recovery. Sweet amine is all natural, contains no sugar or carbs, and has only 24 calories. It's ideal for diabetics, too. Use it like sugar in your favorite drinks, smoothies, or sprinkled on cereal. Here's the deal. Try their 12-day challenge trial pack for only $19.95 with free shipping. It's completely risk-free. And for a limited time, Enter promo code Wayne at checkout for a $5 discount. Order Sweetamine now at sweetamine.com or call 855 Get Sweet. That's 855 438 7933. Live pain free with Sweetamine and take the challenge today. You know, also, um, with so many options available for Americans to protect their retirement or wealth with physical and precious metals, uh, it's hard to know who to trust. My partners at Genesis Gold Group are a faith-driven gold and silver company that is unbashedly America first. 
they don't try to hook people with free silver that isn't really free. So instead, they treat their customers with respect and help guide them to securing their retirement. We want you to visit rumblegold.com today to get their free definitive definitive <laughs> gold guide. That's rumblegold.com. Um, no, uh, uh, we kind of hit on it a little bit yesterday about uh, what was going on in Iran? Uh, I think it was yesterday. What was going on in Iran? Uh, well, in Israel, it, it. I think I got a message this morning saying that um, Kamala isn't going to give them any money for new weapons. I think. I think I saw that. Or not. If she becomes president, she's not. Um, it's no arms of Israel because she can't do anything right now. This is, I mean, but Biden is still there, but you know, Hutch, I, um, I came out yesterday with a little scenario. I was like, there, our side has got to be praying that homeboy at least is alive until all the election day. And I mean, I'm, I'm split on it. You know, election wise. Right. I agree. Today, wise from now till November, I'm a little nervous having this guy up there, and especially with her as his vice president. I mean, yeah. these these people are both empty. Neither one of them know. I mean, Biden used to know what's going on. Yeah, and he's been there a long time. He can almost probably say everything by memory. But Kamala Harris is a rookie, man. Yeah, and nobody likes her, and her staff is turnover. It's ninety five percent turnover rate. So she doesn't even know who works for her. Yep. Yeah, I remember. I remember uh, she she lost most of those people in the first year. Yeah. Um, so uh, we don't know who has been there in the last couple of years, where, whether they've been with her or not. Or you know, she might be running on a skeleton crew. And you just know, don't be know. fooled. Don't be fooled by the the Kamala Harris media, you know, because they'll turn around and tell you, well, Trump had a seventy seven percent staff uh turnover rate and that's true but you got to look further than that the people that Kamala had quit the people that trump had half of them got fired yep wait the ones that trump had couldn't even didn't even sign up because they were threatened i mean uh you i mean that too believe me i knew a lot that wanted to work it's just that uh the the and it wasn't Trump, y'all. It wasn't Trump. I'm not saying it was Trump, but the the strip. Uh, first thing, the media had something to do with it, meaning you gonna go work for him. It and was strictly then, controlled, man. They they isolated him without him even knowing it. Yeah, yeah. And right. then you had the um, the people that were in, that would that had already placed their tentacles on him. There's that are surrounding him, uh, like Hush said. He probably didn't. I'm sure he didn't know anything about it and it didn't get to him because you, you can't get past that wall. So the people that wanted to work for him were like, they couldn't get past, they couldn't get past the wall to even let him know what was happening. So they were like, nah, that's okay. I don't want to work there. I mean, I knew a few that did, um, that, that wanted to work there, but they were like, no, nah, man, they, they go too deep. They go. I, too I read some pieces that said, and I believe these people that said that I, I didn't even know what an emissary was, but they said that the emissary is the most important position that the president has because the intelligence community is 100% geared toward continuity of the corrupt government. Right. In other words, they said that the Senate intelligence committee, anybody that's passed for a agency head position in the intelligence community that passes, that gets confirmed by the Senate, the number one trait that they have is they will lie to the president. And I was like, man, our system, there, there's a good series of articles over at uh, the conservative Treehouse about this. It's, it's, it's weeks long. You have to scroll back to get the first one, but it's explaining the different positions that Trump needs to fill and the, and the pitfalls around them. And I'm learning a lot. I didn't even know a lot of this stuff, but man, I hope he's paying attention to that because we can win. 
we can beat the intelligence community, but we have to be smart about it. Well, and it's interesting. I mean, talking about the hiring, every every host on this show, everybody watching this show, if the if the DOJ want to go after you, they could find a crime and they could convict you. The IRS could audit you to death. They they could General Flynn you, who ended up being exonerated, and they will. I mean, even with President Trump, like this case in New York, that's completely ridiculous, they're probably going to sentence him to Rikers. I mean, that's probably going to happen. And I mean, think about that. For a crime nobody's ever been like convicted of, where they had to do all this stuff. So if you're somebody that wants to go work for the Trump campaign, you have to ask yourself, do I want them to ruin my family, my kids, my friends, myself, all that. And, and because I guarantee there isn't a single person that's going to see this podcast that if the DOJ went after them, they couldn't find some crime they committed. No. And that's not counting the honey potting or whatever they'll do with the, uh, with the intelligence community. And if, if they can't find anything, no, they'll good. just make something up. They make something up. Exactly. Yep. Don't forget James Bond. We're James Bond 2024 today. Yeah. Right. And, well, and, and that's what happened with Flynn. I mean, General Flynn was completely exonerated. And he actually is in the process of suing the government. But he went through hell. Lost his he house. Lost his house. It was terrible. And believe me, like like you said, Hutch, if they can't find something, they'll make it up. And they've gotten pretty good. At making stuff up. I mean, oh, they'll have a guy. They'll have a guy testify <laughs> to the grand jury that you did something to his dog. At, right. And and you ain't never seen the dude. Right. Yep. You ain't never seen the dude. And and as a matter of fact, they'll bring you in court and play um, audio tapes of you talking to somebody, and it's not you. It'd be AI. But you know, you you'll be. I I did that. <laughs> you know, I I called them. I didn't call. What you gonna do? You gonna have an AI de um, detector in the courtroom with you at the same time? So it's a, it's a dark future. <laughs> yeah. Um, and wow. Well, we're already there. That's what's scary. I mean, mm -hmm. we're trying to fight our way out of it without having to go Venezuela on the deal. <laughs> That's the problem with socialism. You can vote yourself in, but you got to shoot your way out. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And isn't it funny before. when you see like these Kamala that, Harris videos of all these crowds? It's like all these people are chanting like democracy for somebody they never voted for. Like she was the least popular person in the last presidential cycle. She was the lowest rated vice president in the history of vice presidents. And, and the establishment said, well, Joe's going to lose, even though the media is telling you Joe could win. Like he's getting his butt kicked. Donald Trump beat him so bad in the debate, he he had to tap out. Like, that's how bad Donald Trump beat him. And, and all of a sudden, hey, they throw him on and like, you democracy, know. you know. It's that's like, his self-inflicted wounds, too. He he looked like he was taking a poop when he was walking to the podium. Right. And like I said yesterday, the first 15 seconds, he was done. You know, so, you know, that, that was, that was self-inflicted. I'll, I'll tell you something else, too, man. CNN is getting on the stolen valor wagon on Tim Waltz. Yeah, I saw well, yeah, I saw that. I was don't watching that a little bit this morning. Not long it'll last, but they're doing it. But like you said, CNN is getting on it, but then this morning the guy was like, yeah, but Donald Trump with the Spurs, you know, I mean and and you know, he he kept trying to Forced that to the Republican guy and the Republican. Okay, well, you know, you know, we, you know, we heard that story and all that, but you know, we're talking about right now. And so, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how I feel on that. Just real quick, hmm. I don't feel that the military is for everybody. If 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 you get out, if you never served, Donald Trump went to military academy for four years. He graduated the third captain, number three in the chain of command. Whatever happened to his foot, I don't know. It's not my business. The, the military is not for everybody, but once you're in the military, and especially if you ascend all the way to senior non-commissioned officer or officer, to me, you're a, you're a traitor to do something like Tim Waltz did. It's just two different things for me, um, really. I mean, I, I know there's people in the military that should have never went there. 
You yep. should have never been. I remember this little skinny. And still there. It's yeah. still there. You know. They but, end up running stuff. But, for, uh, you know, I, I just, I guess, and and Hutch, and, and, and Hutch has a whole lot more experience than, than I do. When, but the way, but the way that I look at it is, you know, I love, I love my military and any, anybody that does something bad to it or whatnot, you know, I, I ain't got no sympathy for you. I don't. And especially if you get, if you get caught and you get, you know, that UCMJ got you because look, I, I got in trouble. So did I, I. I got in trouble. I mean, like for maybe eight or nine weekends, I was counting um, <laughs> uniforms and stuff, and nobody was out. Nobody was in there. I was counting uniforms and cleaning up warehouses by myself. So yeah, I mean, hey, I don't have any sympathy if people get in trouble for doing the bad, you know, treating treating I'll tell, you, wrong. I'll tell you what gets me bad. No offense, Jason, but the Minnesota National Guard, how that guy could go to communist China from the 1990s to 2006 and not, that not be picked up by the intelligence, the, the army intelligence in Minnesota, or even in the Pentagon, somebody should have picked that up. You know, once you get past a certain rank, you know, you're supposed to scrutinize that stuff. I don't see how that happened. Oh, the whole thing was sketched too. He got a DUI and got fired and then, or he resigned and then he, uh, yeah, and then he disappeared to Communist China during Tiananmen Square. And I just find that he got married on the anniversary of Tiananmen Square. Just a really interesting there fact. One. I mean, there's no, there's no coincidences. And now even his wife is talking about with the George Floyd riots, like her tweets are resurfacing <laughs> yeah. on the national level, where I just opened the windows and smelled the burning from Minneapolis. Burning uh, tires, yeah. Right, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, these people are insane. We have to... We have to get out of here. Um, my final thoughts for the weekend, and I heard a pastor say this, and I am going to start using it for a long time. As long, For the rest of the time I'm on this earth, stop taking the poison hoping that your enemy is going to die for, from it. Okay? Let that marinate. We'll talk about it on Monday. But stop taking the poison thinking – or and 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 hoping that your enemy is going or you're watching Carl, your enemy that goes out to you, Carl. Die from it, but you're taking the poison. Jason, go. Uh, hey, two thoughts, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Wayne Hutch, great week as always. Uh, folks, do something fun this weekend. It's things are gonna get wilder. Trump sentencing in September, DNC in a in oh, yeah, a week we'll talk about so. that on Monday. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. We're gonna continue to use the phrase this is unprecedented. So get ready. Uh, but but the last thought to leave you with is, we, you know, we ended like three weeks ago. Everybody realized Kamala Harris was a retard and she was stupid. <laughs> and now everybody's painting her and your Democrat friends are like, Kamala Harris is great. And you're looking at him like, do you not remember three weeks ago? And the problem is, no, they're brainwashed. And speaking of unprecedented. A Democrat governor just got passed over for vice president because he's Jewish. Let uh, that let that sink in. Uh, have a great weekend. Truck's back. <laughs> truck's back. Back check true. I'm with Hutch on that. No, but, oh, no, absolutely. He got, he got passed over because he wanted to be president. That's why. And she was like, well, she had to block the first Jewish president. Next, she Next. wasn't going to pick him anyways. Her, her husband is Jewish. <laughs>